Hello everyone and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. In today's episode, Inclusive Magazine contributor Dr. Timothy Kaczynski is discussing bone grafting and immediate implant placement in the anterior. Let's take a look. I'm Timothy Kaczynski from Bingham Farms, Michigan. Here, a 61-year-old male exhibited slight purulence around his maxillary right central incisor. The tooth, which was previously restored with a conventional porcelain fused to metal crown, had become mobile. An endodontist had determined that the root was fractured horizontally and recommended extraction. The patient had high blood pressure, which was controlled with medication, but no other significant medical findings. Treatment options were discussed with the patient, including a conventional three-unit anterior bridge, a removable partial denture appliance, or a single dental implant reconstruction of the maxillary right central incisor. The patient elected to proceed with tooth extraction, followed by dental implant restoration. Physics forceps from Golden Dental Solutions were used to remove the problematic tooth. The beak of the instrument was placed onto the palatal aspect of the root, about three millimeters subgingively. The bumper, or fulcrum, of the instrument was positioned as far up the vestibule as possible. With a simple rotation of the wrist towards the tip of the nose, the tooth was lifted up and out of the socket. The procedure was atraumatic, and no harm was done to the facial bone. Due to the aesthetic concerns involved with working in the anterior maxilla, an envelope flap was made, avoiding the creation of any vertical incisions. The envelope flap allowed visualization of the facial bone contours, evaluation of the interdental papilla, and observation of any dehiscence or defects in the facial bone. The facial wall had a slight defect that could be easily repaired and there was adequate bone apically to stabilize the implant. It was determined that the site would be prepared for immediate implant placement. An osteotomy was created for a 4.3 millimeter by 11.5 millimeter Han tapered implant. A 2.4 millimeter pilot drill was used to create the initial osteotomy about three millimeters palatal to the facial aspect of the adjacent crowns and about three millimeters deeper than the cemental enamel junction of the adjacent roots. To avoid the risk of perforating the relatively thin facial bone, the osteotomy was created without following the path of the extraction socket, and a 4.3 millimeter by 15 millimeter surgical drill was used to create the final preparation, extending beyond the apex of the socket. To maintain consistent bone volume, demineralized allograft material composed of cortical cancellous particles was mixed with sterile saline to create a paste for grafting. Allograft material has osteoconductive elements that promote new bone growth while maintaining adequate volume. The graft material was packed firmly but not aggressively into the socket site. Because the graft has various sized particles, which vary in their rates of resorption and bone replacement, the operator should avoid condensing the particles too firmly in order to prevent crushing the larger particles into smaller ones and elevating the rate of resorption. A barrier membrane was then placed to prevent ingrowth of the surrounding soft tissue and to permit osteogenic cells to repopulate the bone defects. A resorbable membrane was passively placed on the facial aspect of the bone to act as a barrier. When grafting a socket or attempting to repair a facial defect, it can be challenging to properly position the membrane and prevent it from dislodging prematurely. Because the membrane must be retained passively in order to promote predictable bone growth, it is important to elevate the attached gingiva and mucosa to make sure the barrier engages the facial bone at least, at least two millimeters apical to any defect. This rule should also be followed on the palatal or lingual side. The gingiva can then be easily sutured and the membrane will not dislodge. 
The Han tapered implant was threaded into the osteotomy and then tightened to full seating with a torque wrench. We see that the prominent thread design of the implant allowed for precise, straightforward placement. Radiography confirmed proper positioning and full seating of the implant. A flat cover screw was hand tightened into the implant to minimize the pressure exerted on the implant during healing and osseointegration. The resorbable membrane was then tucked over the crest of the ridge and engaged at least two millimeters of the palatal bone. The flap was closed with Villet Plus sutures from River Point Medical, which demonstrate the high tensile strength that is critical throughout the healing period. The maxillary flipper appliance was created to cover the palate, protecting the treatment site from excessive pressure. Figure 13 shows the post-operative CBCT scanning and illustrates that the implant was positioned optimally. Following seven days of healing, the sutures were removed, and then the site was allowed to heal for approximately four additional months, and the patient returned for the final impression appointment. A round tissue punch was used to access the implant site. The tissue punch caused little trauma, allowing immediate final impressions to be taken using an open tray transfer assembly. A final impression was made using vinyl polysiloxane materials as seen in figure 17. To prevent the tissue from healing over the implant while a temporary implant abutment and transitional crown were fabricated, a healing abutment was tightened into place. Our lab, Glidewell Lab, then fabricated a custom temporary abutment and provisional crown to help establish optimal tissue contours in the aesthetic zone. Note that the margins of the abutment were level with the height of the gingiva. This prevented the possibility of cement being forced beneath the soft tissue. The patient was able to wear and evaluate the transitional crown for about three weeks, and the interdental contours improved over time. Following patient approval of the provisional restoration, our lab fabricated an inclusive zirconia custom abutment with titanium base and an aesthetic Bruxer anterior crown utilizing the latest dental CAD cam techniques, the custom abutment and crown were produced with precision. This allowed the final restorative components to be seated with minimal adjustment. The custom abutment was tightened to full seating using a torque wrench and provided an aesthetic substructure for the final all zirconia crown. Because Bruxer anterior crowns exhibit translucency similar to natural dentition, the custom zirconia abutment helped maintain the lifelike results. So in conclusion, excellent function and aesthetic can be achieved with prosthetically driven implant treatment. Modern implant techniques and design allow for outstanding initial stability and immediate implant placement when indicated. When properly executed, grafting techniques help maintain bone. In this aesthetically demanding case, the Han tapered implant provided an excellent foundation for predictable and aesthetic tooth replacement. Provisionalization with the transitional abutment and crown also played a key role in providing the patient with an aesthetic final restoration in a challenging area of the mouth. Thank you for that, Dr. Kaczynski. And if you'd like to learn more about this case, you can check out his article in the latest Inclusive magazine. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, we thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.